Good Wednesday morning. Wow. <laughs> I had to stop and think to myself, is it Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Hey, welcome to Ice Age TV. The internal combustion engine age YouTube channel talks about my cars and trucks and motorcycles and the dogs and good stuff. Hey, good morning. Welcome to my channel. If you're a new subscriber, appreciate you tuning in to listen to my my jabbering mouth talk this morning about the things in life and fun time in the fun time getting ready to be fun time with the bronco and the motorcycle trailer yeah i spent a lot of time yesterday trying to create fun time even though now questioning that <laughs> i'm truly on the edge of changing plans <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i'm not lying here <laughs> i really start i woke up this morning thinking why the hell am I taking my bikes down? I already got bikes down there. Even the kid yesterday. My daughter called me out. She's like, this just takes so much time, Dad. Why are you doing this? We already have Indians down in Tennessee. And I'm like, yeah, right. Why am I going through all this aggravation to take the Hurleys down? We're going to get Indians down there. We should be riding the Indians in the Indian Territory of Tennessee. Right? Oh, my gosh. So stay tuned for more adventures on that. On the fun factor, so yeah, and here is the, the Challenger. I mean, part of me says, let's just take the Mopars now. Let's make it the Mopar Indian weekend, right? I need to be driving that, not the kid. So in so many ways, I think we're gonna take the two Challengers down and have some fun with those down there. I don't know. Complicated here on the Ice Age TV. Morning conversations, it is so, so funny. I put this in the wrong pocket. My gate, my barn opener. All right, pups. Is everybody even behaving? And I'm getting an earlier start. Does everybody want to get out of here this morning and get on the road and get down the road? And yeah, what the heck am I going to do? I don't know. But yeah, you're hearing the fun factor, right? The fun factor. You know, I thought to myself this morning, it's the typical thing if I say to myself, what do we talk about today to have entertain ourselves? To have something else to do in our life besides go to the media machine and just hear the non-ending baloney beyond baloney. So get up here. It's still a little cool up here, but nothing radical. Very nice out actually. Come on there. Tang tang. The tang of mango. Oh, I got all my windows up because it's actually nice out. And I want to get some fresh air in here. These stinky dogs are stinky. No reason to turn the heat on. But as this was, okay, there's the one dog. I didn't see her, my, I just had the one dog, my, how do you like my unique artistic work? My daughter's laughing at that. But yeah, I just want to see how it looked up there. Get some attention, right? Attention, so, yeah, the conversations for today is fun. I thought to myself this morning, boy, more than ever, don't we need to start getting the more fun factor in our lives than the woes i just don't know how some people can sit around and watch social media i don't know how you can do it it's depressing twitter to me is depressing why do you want to go to twitter i mean it's just so much ah yeah who wants to know i mean anybody here really in life you just don't want to know i mean sincerely for everybody here in life, you know there's so many problems going on in the world, families, and who isn't just on page like, you know, I just, I have to do my life and take care of my family and do my things, and just to hear the never-ending problems of everybody else, it just, you know, it depresses you. It's overwhelming. So I thought myself this morning, why don't we talk about the fun factor? What, where is the fun factor? I mean, really, where is... More than ever, our society needs to go back to the fun factor. It's getting too serious. I mean, it's incredible how we're living in an age where everyone knows the future. And now artificial intelligence? I think to myself, wow. When the Chinese, you know, get master artificial intelligence? Has anybody been thinking about that? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have some fun when that happens. So... Got any of my coffee, man. Tell you what, those are projects. You know, I, w I was out here in the shop until close to 9 o'clock last night. Putting together the truck and trailer and... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it was to keep you going and keep you moving. It does. For all the fun factor, I mean, all the work you do, and that's the thing. For you 
to enjoy fun in life, you got to be a pretty active individual to make that work. Just like your true beginnings of getting going in life. And I saw that very young age as you either you're going to really bust your tail and work really hard. And, and I mean, I worked six days in right out of high school. I was working six days a week. I'm not lying, not here to, you know, I'm not here to embellish. I'm just sharing stories. And so I worked six days a week, eight hour days. And I was in the auto parts industry. And then from there, I went in the oil industry and I worked um, pretty much six days a week in that, sometimes seven days a week. And then I went <clears throat> into being a commission salesperson. And the only way I could survive is I had to work seven days a week. <laughs> and then once I got out of that, and I transitioned into my try to be on my own business and I had to work seven days a week. And that's kind of my whole life story. It's just, but I've always have thought when you're young and you have the energy, you really need just to do everything you can to hopefully do the right things. And hopefully when you get older, you can enjoy all your hard efforts. I mean, that's the thing. I'm 60 years old. I've been working in the workforce for 42 years. Yeah. So I know I do short videos and other stuff, and I'm sure a lot of people see these some of these videos like, what the hell? Who the hell is this guy? You know, and it's easy to come to closure that that yeah, stuff just stuffed on my lap, right? Yeah, right. So for me, the fun factor has always been though, is from working very hard, but always having that fun outlook. And that's the thing. It's always driven me. And the biggest thing that's always driven me to work hard is to own nice cars and motorcycles. And, and that's been a driving force is for me to work really hard so that I'm able to buy a really nice, fun vehicle. And I mean, just, just out of my true beginnings, I can just sort of remember in high school, the number one thing I was focused on was putting a lift kit on my dad's Chevy truck that he bought. I mean, that was, you know, the lift kit and the wheels and tires and a roll bar and KC lights and a nice uh, intake manifold, Elderbrock intake manifold, and a Holley, um, like, 600 CFM carburetor, headers, you know, put on hooker headers. I mean, this is what drove me, you know. I was, that was like I was in high school and working when I was working in high school, working at a nursery and then working at a gas station. And so, and but that was my fun time, is to be able to have money, to be able to buy these things, to put them on the truck and modify it. Isn't that what's, and then that, if you just go to these car meets with me and watch the car show, I mean, the fun factor at those car shows is shown through the people coming there with their really cool cars. And when I do a review of one of the cars, you'll just hear of the individuals that go through the list of things they've done to the car. Because that's the fun factor to them. That is their outlet. And that's the key, I think, that is where we are in today's society more than ever I just came up, and I think so many others watching my channel are on the same page. You came up from doing something that rewarded you with something. And, and it was a physical type of reward. And, and it can be mental as well. But what I mean by that is you worked really hard. And you took your hard-earned money. And you spent it on something that you used like in a car. I mean, it could be other, it could be motorcycles. I mean, I don't know. It could be um, fishing. You're into fishing big time. It could be your boating. You're into boating big time. Um, you know, it could be a lot. It could be in camping. You want to be able to buy a camper, camping gear, or climbing rock walls. I mean, or it's infinite on all the things that you can go work hard for to have monies to go try to do something outside of your daily routine. And for us, it just seems like for me, that's always been a driving factor of my dedication to working really hard is to be rewarded from my incomes to go buy things that excite me and give me my fun factor. And But yet, in so many ways today, where the car industry is going and where the car market is, is that kind of taking it away? I mean, come on. Anybody here knows the good old days, and it's still going on, you know, the SEMA, you know, SEMA, you know, everybody knows what that is, right? And, you know, that's a huge industry of aftermarket modifications for your cars. 
and all the different mods that you can do your car. And that's and the, for so many people, that's the fun factor because you're getting to take your car and personalize it and, and gives you more fun out of it. The way the car handles, drives, sounds, you know, the exhaust. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Yeah, I put a different exhaust on that Chevy truck. I mean, these are just really great things that motivated me, motivated me to want to work harder. And But I think to myself at the same time, in today's future of cars that are being electrified and being autonomous of vehicles, in fact, this past car show, you know, I really haven't focused on Tesla. I've never been a Tesla fan. Just never have been the Elon Musk, um, you know, type of guy. I mean, I like Elon Musk. More so today, in some aspects, but in other aspects, <clears throat> you know, what's he up to, right? You just took that guy there. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, he's had big plans for himself. But, you know, he's doing good, I think, for the most part at the moment. So, for him and other manufacturers, my good friend at the car meet, he, uh, Kevin, his name's Kevin. Won't tell you your last name if he's watching my, I don't know if he watches my morning videos. Great guy. He likes to come to car meet just to see what I brought. <laughs> he's always like, yeah, I just like coming to car meet because I'm brought me to see something different with you. I'm like, right. And, but he was telling about his Tesla and how in his Tesla, he has a Model S, he gets in it and he drives to work and the car for the most part drives to work. And he's able to do other tasks as he's going to work. It isn't like that Ford product that I have that once the Ford Blue Cruise, you know, sees me looking somewhere else or doing something, it freaks out and it starts, you know, turning off the Blue Cruise. The Tesla, apparently, you can be doing whatever you want to do. I guess you can climb in the back seat, basically. You've heard those stories. And the car drives itself. I mean, he is like the car maps itself and it knows where to go and how to do everything. He doesn't trust it in parking garages. He doesn't like it down there. He turns it off. So there's a few areas where he's not totally confident in that vehicle, but on the open road and the main roads, he's very confident. And so the point is the fun factor. I mean, I think to myself, for us individuals, who doesn't love getting behind the wheel of a car and you have to take control of the car and you're interacting with the car and you're so in tune with the car that to the point where when you go out and mod it, you know, you know what you've done to the car. You can tell if it's running better or worse, whether it be the suspension, the tires and wheels, the exhaust, get the drone in the car that you used to not have, um, the performance end, does it, you know, does it have a lag in it? I mean, there's so many things, but you're so connected with that car that you just know if the vehicle is running better or worse. But yet, we're being taken away from that fun interaction. Where we're literally, the electric car industry goal is for autonomous self-driving vehicles more so than ever as time progresses. And it's separating you from the car. But that's the driving thing that's driven this country is the love and passion for a car and your freedom of driving your car wherever you want. And remember, it's just the basics of life that when Henry Ford and other Daimler or Mercedes-Benz and the other car manufacturers out there got going, your independence to be able to move down the road and go where you, where you want within reason of energy was a huge step for mankind. Because if you have enough money, you can get in your car today and drive to California. I don't think I'd drive there, but the whole point is, can you walk to California? Yeah, you can. Is it going to take you a while? Is it going to be a dreadful, <laughs> miserable walk between all the storms? And Yeah, forget that. So the whole point is, the car opened up the freedom of us to be able to go out and do and go places and get things accomplished much more efficient than walking around or getting on a horse. So, it's evolved into today's society. That's the main footprint of what everybody uses, the most part, to get around. And But yet, at the same time, it's being taken away from us. So, it's a fun factor. I talked to myself this morning. The fun factor, more than ever, seems to be taken away from us. 
And the fun factor in so many ways is being looked at as you're shameful. Because if you're the Ice Age person, as time progresses, you're going to be a shameful individual. So we're driving a gasoline car that creates carbon dioxide, right? In your carbon monoxide. So, or whatever. So the, the whole point is a carbon footprint that's going to come from you having your fun time is going to be, yeah, it's going to be looked at like you're a problem to society. So shame on you for having fun. I mean, in so many ways, and shame on you if you don't want to buy an your vehicle, right? I mean, more than ever, aren't we living in a society that's, that's pushing the green agenda more than ever in, in your habits of your lifestyle and what you think is right versus wrong? And the movement that's really pushing more than ever for the focal point of what your impact on Mother Earth is. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. And that's what I'm saying is the fun factor for us seems to be pushed onto us that we shouldn't have the fun factor in so many ways. I mean, that's what I'm, and that's, I just feel like more than ever that it seems like more of the fun is being taken away that's being turned into the aggravation. And people are more aggravated, and the focal point is more on being aggravated. I mean, is the person today more motivated by working very hard to donate monies to organizations that have agendas? that are moving a whole different way and trying to take, you know, the basics away of what makes sense and doesn't make sense. I mean, truly, are the people more than ever today that are more focused on donating monies to create change and to take away just the basics of fun and life? And, and that's what drives them? I mean, in so many ways, I think yes. I mean, more than ever. I mean, it just seems like more than ever is major organizations just wanting to shut down the fun factor. I mean, look at the racetracks. Look at the drag strips that are closing throughout the country. I mean, so many of these drag strips are being bulldozed and turned into developments. So the fun factor of you going out on Friday or Saturday in your local or within reason area to go to the drag strip and watch people race their ice cars that fun factor is being removed. I mean, and that was something that was really big when I was in high school and out of high school. And you could go and, you know, look forward to Friday evening, doing the cruise up and down the boulevard and, you know, running up, and, you know, just driving a really cool car, running to your friends. And that still goes on. I'm not saying that's taken away, but that's a fun factor. And that's what's driven us to these cars that we want to share our fun with others. And that's what gets us to like these car meets because that's a fun time for us to interact with each other and share our stories of what gets us excited about our cars that create fun in our life. But yet the electric car in the end, I mean, I know it's going to be infinite on variables. You buy an electric car and <clears throat> what do you mod? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can get like the plaid. Have you heard now the track plaid? Yeah, now you can get the Tesla Plaid with the, tr with the track package. So you can buy it right out of the showroom with the track package and or if you already have a Plaid Tesla, you can upgrade it through an over the, I guess, air software update and different, I guess, uh, wheels and different brakes and tires. So it's now a 200 mile car. Apparently the Plaid was limited to like 164. I guess because of the tires, and they said the brakes sucked, which I agree with that. I, I drove that Plaid, and I'll raise my hand and say, yeah, that Plaid's brakes were not the greatest. So Tesla's upgraded that car now, where it's a 200-mile-an-hour you know, supercar, basically. So to get your fun factor out, the whole point is, with electric vehicles, are you going to have the capability down the road to do all these little mods? You know, you're not going to be putting headers on it, right? You're not going to be putting a different carburetor on it, a different manifold, correct? Um, do you need to put bigger brake calipers on it because it's got wheel motors? I guess. The Plaid did it, right? Um, 
Are you going to, I mean, there's just so many things that go along with the ICE vehicle uh, personalizing it. Is the electric vehicle going to give that same type of satisfaction? And for the rising uh, younger generation, now there's nobody here. <clears throat> there's nobody here. The dogs just want to get all riled up to have some fun, right? You're not going to have any fun right now. Just go sit down. So, so the fun of the future generation in cars, I don't, I don't know if the majority of the younger generation will look to vehicles to be in their outlet for fun. That's a whole other variable I think that's going to play out in our lifetime is that so many people will be dissuaded to not be excited about these vehicles because in so many aspects they feel like they're a nuisance to society. I mean, truly. I mean, I think that that's, that narrative, that'll be the next narrative. Once the electric vehicle is populated and the green activists aren't seeing the satisfaction of um, the carbon footprint and Mother Earth isn't, you know, coming around to meet in their eyes what they think humans are doing to it is satisfying them. They're going to even cross another bridge and just start then creating what they think is another hindrance to society. And that's just the transportation itself. And you, and here's a good story. Here's a guy named John Moran. And... He is a guy that worked for the EPA. And apparently out of North Carolina, he was a key guy that was the one of the guys that helped uh, start doing airline um, emissions. Meaning so, for all these big jets that are taken off from airports, the EPA was trying to figure out how they can capture, you know, the... the the fuel, the unburnt fuels, and the impact of what's going on with jets taken off from airports and collect data from those and have a race vehicle literally follow a jet down the high, down the runway and be, you know, collecting all this, you know, the particles from the jet fuel and figure out what type of impact it's having on, you know, on our environment. So this guy came up with the idea that he wanted a, a 1970 Superbird. <laughs> yeah, the the Dodge Daytona Superbird, or the Plymouth, I'm sorry, the Plymouth Superbird Daytona. So he convinced the EPA, the governing bodies, back in that time to buy a 1970 Plymouth Superbird and then customize it to be able to run behind a jet um, plane, you know, a commercial, I'm talking about, you know, airline passenger jet plane and run down the track with it because they knew it was a 150 mile an hour capable, stable car. He's got big wind, big wing. And knowing that the, the behind the jet engine, you know, the force of those jet engines from anybody being behind it, you had to have an incredibly stable vehicle it would stay plain to the ground that wouldn't get blown off the ground. So this guy, John Moran, convinced the EPA to buy this Superbird, and they modified it. A guy modified it from automatic to manual, and then they put in the technology of tubes in the car to be able to, to be able to, you know, capture all the, you know, all the, and they put a two-way uh, radio or the, the terminal radio and the pilot's radio so the driver could communicate with the tower, and if he had to communicate with the airline pilot, he could talk to them, and, and once again, they had the technology in there to be, with tubes to attach the car to be capt capturing the air particles. And so when they did this, this is classic. Talk about fun time. This guy, I believe his name is John Moran, this guy raises his hand and comes to closure that he'll be the guy who drives the car. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> if I worked for the EPA and I worked next to John and I saw him come up with this idea and then I saw he convinced the governing bodies to buy this car, then to mod the car, and then at the last second he felt it was his duty to drive the car, I'd be like... <laughs> I mean, come on. The fun factor? So this guy, John, he gets to race up and down a freaking, um, <laughs> you know, airport runway for a living. That's what he now is doing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I give this guy credit.
<laughs> so the whole article is about how this Daytona Superbird was a barn find. That's really what the real conversation, how this came about. That this guy used this car for X amount of years, and they even used it to capture the effects of leaded gas that opened the eyes to people that the leaded gas wasn't a good idea, the impact of leaded gas. So this guy helped create the unleaded gas. Right. So apparently this guy did this for many years. Apparently some of these airline pilots would freak out when they'd see behind them this Daytona Superbird sitting on the runway, and they had no clue what's going on. And thinking this thing wants to race them down the runway. So some of these airline pilots would be calling the terminal and like, what is going on? Apparently one guy, one guy argued with John through the two-way radio or the terminal radio about what he's doing. And he wouldn't move the plane for like 15 minutes because he was confused of what is going on. This He's concerned for the well-being of that guy in that car. So... This went on for years, and eventually once he got all the testing done with his car, the car was parked, and apparently in 1979, this car was put on auction, a government auction, and the car was just noted as a 1970 Plymouth. That's all it was. Well, apparently this school teacher from, I'm not sure exactly what part of the country, but a school teacher just miraculously found this government auction and he found the car and he bid $500 on this car and he was the only bidder of the car and he got the car for $500. And so then he took the car back to his school, his school teacher. And I, I guess maybe he was a mechanical um, school teacher, a shop teacher or whatever you may want to say. And he used that car for apparently 20 years in his teaching at his school. And he kept all the, you know, EPA's little uh, gadgets that they put in the car. And and so then apparently, I guess a guy, I guess another guy bought the car. And the car tried to go to auction, but it never met reserve. And apparently the next guy that bought the car passed away. And this guy, Gary something, he's a big Mopar uh, wing enthusiast that collects all these uh, super bees or super birds. Apparently, he bought this car from the widow. I don't know how much, no one knows how much he paid per se. So it never was sold to auction. And he's taken the car and he's restored the car. And apparently, it's thousands and thousands of hours of of restoring the car and documentation of how the car was, you know, modified and built. And so he's made it all, he's converted all the way back to the, to the original EPA style car and he's not selling it. So it's not a car that's going to be for sale, but this guy, you know, there, there's the fun factor. But once again, I'm going back to this guy, John, that convinced the EPA to, I mean, come on, if anybody worked with this guy, wouldn't you just be laughing on how this guy just created his own gig of a hell of a job? I mean, think about it. You're in the, you're in the EPA, you know, you're in the, you're in a desk job or whatever it may be, and and now you've elevated yourself to go, you know, burn rubber and on a daily or weekly basis, your gig is driving a superbird. <laughs> right? I mean, so to me, that guy sounds like he's a fun guy. I mean, isn't that isn't that kind of like really who we are? That don't we just enjoy being around fun people? I mean, but yet more so today than ever in society. If you go to Twitter, you just see the people that aren't having fun that are beating each other up. It's just so. It's just so. Uh, it's so bad. I mean. It really is incredible how, to me, in my eyes, today, more than ever in my lifetime, it seems that the people that get fun in their own demented way is by beating people up. And it's and it's being accepted. I mean, it's truly sad that today, more than ever, we're living in society, that a person's fun is being high, is being stoned. 
They're, you know, they're getting, they're what they look, what I looked forward to when I was young of working hard and getting, making money to buy something for my truck or my Cuda that I had or my Challenger I had or be able to save up money to buy a car or whatever it may be. It seems like more than every day, the outlet of fun is the drug, is the drugs or the, or the hate. I mean, it's very, very, um, it's very sad that today's society seems to thrive more off of what individuals come in their own mind of fun is joining Antifa and going to a, a camp to learn how to beat people up. I mean, I was telling a person the other day that I know that the, uh, I was telling a person that, that you think about it, you see these, these videos of Antifa showing up and these people are in full body armor. They're in full body armor. And, and to think that you as an individual, if you're at some rally or whatever you're doing, you're going to have any fun challenging this person that's in military armor. You're kidding yourself. You're, you're an idiot. <laughs> the best thing you can do is start running, running, because you're not going to be able to withstand the attack of somebody that's in full military armor. You're not going to get anywhere. And I, and I tell people that I run into is like, these are individuals that their fun time is going to training sessions on how to be very aggressive, militia type of people. I mean, it's very, it's incredible. And, and you know, the whole point here is that to me in our society, it seems like the fun outlet for people is turned into what turns into very aggressive behaviors. And that's when I talk about the pothead society, that more than ever, people look forward to making enough money to go buy pot or fentanyl or whatever it may be because that's their fun time. But we all know these people that, you know, get fixated on that now being their outlet for fun, um, many of them aren't here anymore. I mean, sadly, I mean, the fentanyl deaths are going through the roof. And then there's more statistics growing, I think, more than ever. But, you know, it's all debatable. I know that. But the heavy users of cannabis are now there's major, you know, concerns that the well-being of, of an individual that smokes cannabis on a regular basis, that's a young individual, their mind is going to be, you know, pretty screwed up. They're not going to be living in reality. I mean, I mean, who doesn't know the days of growing up when I was growing up that you knew the potheads? You just knew who the potheads were. They just had a different mindset and a different look. And so for us... You know, more than ever, I think I feel like the social media machine has taken the fun away. The fun narrative through the social media machine seems to be demented views and demented ways of what makes a person have fun. And wow, how do we get back? <laughs> I mean, how do we get back just the good old days of having fun? I mean, fun with your family. Yeah, that's a huge problem, right? Family, even though. Not so much. There's an incredible amount of families that have incredible relationships and, you know, and gatherings and stuff like that. So I wouldn't buy into that. I would buy more into it. Just a social media machine that's having such a, a huge impact on how people look at things and what they think is acceptable. And sadly today, more than ever, I think we're witnessing more than ever on how someone can be convinced that they can just go do incredible harm to somebody and there's no consequences. I mean, I think that's where we are. And how do we change it? I mean, how do we change it? Somebody thinks it's fun to go do, you know, bad onto others that's not acceptable. And how do you change that person's mindset that that's not what life's about? Life's about helping others and that we all want to have fun. And how do you strive to have good fun than demented fun, right? All right, everybody. Hey, leave it that. That's pretty much it. Run out of time. Got to go have fun. Do you have fun? I got to look at my business, see if I can get out of here. What am I going to take? Yeah, it gets complicated for the fun time. But hey, that's what it's all about. You got to create fun. You got to make the best of it. And that's what we got to do. Let's try to make the best of it. Let's be in the up and up. How do we get on the up and up? I mean, sincerely. Go to the social media. I don't know how you can, I don't not know how you can watch social media. And you can be excited. You want to go have fun. Turn it off. Just turn this stuff off. Wow. Harry, thanks again for watching my channel. 
Stay tuned for the Tennessee road trip. And what do we end up taking? I don't know. I'm still up in there. It's going to happen. So just uh, watch later or stay tuned. And appreciate it. Everybody watch my channel and appreciate the nice comments and support. And as always, God bless. Stay safe. Have a great day. and Stay tuned.